Slacklining started about 30 or 40 years ago in Yosemite when uh, climbers would take their climbing webbing, their one inch climbing webbing, and stretch it between trees and then walk on it. And that got tighter and longer um, and got bouncier. And eventually people started doing jumps and walking way longer lines. Um, and eventually people took it to two inch webbing. And you can pretty much use it as a two inch trampoline now and do all sorts of flips, double flips, or what have you. There are many types of slacklining, and each one has evolved at its own rate and pace over the years. So the lines have gotten a lot stronger than they used to be. And trick liners in particular, the people doing a lot of acrobatic movements on the lines, they realized that they really needed strength in the line so they could tighten it and get a lot of amplitude when they bounced. It's really significant to have this trick line competition happen in San Francisco because not only are we celebrating the iconic cable car lines of the city, but we're also bringing slacklining to a huge mass of public. To see the sport blowing up throughout Europe and going all over the world, for it to be coming here, I think it's just kind of coming back to the roots of where the sport started, so I think it's really special that this city is now recognizing it. Behind me, we've got the next generation of trick lining, which is airlines. So you can have a mix between high lining and trick lining. The slack lining course that we're going to be on is, is going to be huge. The line's going to be 30 feet high, and there's going to be a bunch of lines crisscrossing, essentially, so you can transfer from line to line. And that is the contest we have today. Who can do the sickest, most creative, badass, hardcore run that you can do on an airline? San Francisco, are you ready? Let's get it going! The criteria for judging today is uh, a five-part system. And it will mostly be based on, in layman's terms, like how difficult the tricks you're doing are, how unique your run is, how creative you are when you're on the lines, are you using all the lines. It's really important that I acknowledge the difficulty of all the tricks that they're doing but also their style. How much style do they have? How unique are they when they perform those tricks? How can you set yourself apart? And so we're not looking like we just saw the same thing from the last guy. So I really look at style and cleanliness. And how can you look at the public while you're doing a trick? We will see who will be crowned Red Bull Baywatch Champions, Tally, Mickey, and Jan. You guys ready? We need everyone to participate here, and we need everyone to make some noise. All right, yeah. Come on, crowd, let's feel it. Mickey Wilson, a favorite here today as well. At the end of round two, I like broke my finger. Like right as I fell, I was like, I landed. I was like, oh, that's broken or sprained. That's not good. I was like, well, now I just got to put it all together in one solid run, get some good transfers, and land a couple more of my big tricks that I hadn't landed yet. When it comes down to judging, you really have to take into effect what happened that round, what tricks were landed that round. What set the winner apart from everyone else is the fact that he landed the most tricks, used all of the lines, and it performed the best. That three minutes is what matters, and Mickey came out on top in that three minutes.